Hello and welcome to the Engineer's House channel. Today we're going to discuss about the shear stress applied to an arbitrary area. As you can see, here are some examples of the built-up members which are nailed together. Today we're going to obtain a formula to determine the shear stress and we're going to analyze these built-up members and find out what the shear stress is. But how can we determine the shear stress? We can consider a prismatic beam like this, with a cross-sectional area as you can see. This is the cross-sectional area and here is the beam. If we cut this beam from this place, we will see that the free body diagram of our section is going to be this. This beam can be applied to many forces. In this case, it is not important to know which forces are applied because we are not going to find out the magnitude of V. We are just going to find out the shear stress and we assume that the magnitude of V is given already. So this is going to be the free body diagram of our beam. We have the shear force and the bending moment. Now let's find out what is the horizontal shearing force applied to a cross-sectional area. We will detach an element from the beam. From the point we have cut the beam, we have this area. Actually, we can detach an element like this. If we look at this element deeply, we will see that it has a cross-section like this. We are going to find out how much stress these cross sections are supporting. For this man, we need to know some factors. This is the element from another view. A horizontal shear force like delta H is applied like this, which is shown in another view like this. The formula for the horizontal shearing force which is denoted as delta H, is obtained by this equation. V is the shear force applied to the beam. Q is the first moment of area. I is the centroidal moment of inertia of the entire section. And delta x is shown in the figure. But what are these factors? To find out the shearing force, we need to calculate these factors. The q is the first moment of area. But for which portion? This is our cross section, as you can see. But we need to know which portion is going to be used in this equation. I is clear. It is the centroidal moment of inertia of the entire cross section. But what about Q? What is it exactly? We know that we need to find a portion and write the Q for it. And this equation must be above the neutral axis. We know that the neutral axis is where there is no bending moments and we have determined its place in chapters before. And we have calculated its magnitude in previous chapters. The Q area is where we need to find the shear stress. So we will write the equation for a place we are going to find its shear stress. Here we're going to find this place, but we will solve some examples to see how does it really work. But how much is the shear stress? We have calculated the delta H, but we need to calculate the shear stress. Consider that element again. It was applied to a shearing force. And now you can see the distribution of the shear stress. How is this obtained? We know that delta H was equal to V cross Q divided by I cross delta X. But 
we can write it in a different way to find out what is the shear stress. We know that the shear stress is actually obtained like this. As we have learned previously, the force divided by the area will give us the stress. The force is delta H, which we have just obtained. And divided by the area, we're going to find out the shearing stress, which is actually the average shearing stress. But let's connect these two equations. If we consider the thickness of the beam and denoted with T, we can write delta X like this and the area is going to be delta X cross T. So if we write it again, we will see that These two delta x will be removed and this equation will remain. This is going to be the equation for the shear stress, as you can see. We can also represent another factor, which is q and it is known as delta h per unit length. This is known as the shear flow. We will use these factors later and see how it works in examples. Here is an example about a built-up member. This is a square box beam, which is made of planks nailed together. The nails are located vertically and they are spread out longitudinally throughout the beam. We are given the spacing between the nails, which is going to be S. We are given the shear force V, and we are about to determine the shearing force applied to each nail and the maximum shearing stress in the beam. In order to find out the force applied, we need to know some factors. We can use the shear flow, which is the force divided by the length. In order to determine the shear flow, we need to know some factors, like the moment of inertia and the first moment of area. It is important to know which Q portion is going to be used. As you can see, the nails are located in this way. So that means if the nails are removed, this part will be detached and disconnected. So we are going to find out how much stress this area is supporting. Therefore, we need to use this portion in our equation. As you can see in this figure, here is our cross section. I need this part to calculate the Q. We know that Q is equal to the area cross the distance to the center of the section. If this is our center line, the distance from the center of this portion to the center of the area is going to be the distance used in this equation. We also need to calculate the moment of area. It is clear that for an area like this, the moment of area, actually the second moment of an area, is going to be like this. Actually, we need to calculate the moment of inertia of the first square and we need to find out the moment of inertia of the second square, which is inside it. Actually, H prime is 
these parts. So if we plug our values as are given, we can find out the magnitude of the moment of inertia, which is going to be this, just like I shown. Now let's find out how much the Q is. I will draw this again. Center line, portion needed. This is going to be the distance, which here is equal to this amount. If we use this equation and plug the values, The area used here is the area of this section. Now we can determine the shear flow. We have the shear force, the Q and I. If we plug the values, we will see that it is equal to this amount. This is the units because it is the force per unit length. For this example, we know that the shear flow is equal to the force per length. So, the force applied to each nail is going to be equal to this. But this is for the case when only one nail in the cross section exists. For example, a case like this. Which there is only one nail. Now, for the portion we have considered, there are two nails on each side. You can see a nail. So, it is clear that the force is obtained like this. Because the force now will be divided between these two nails and the portion is actually connected by these two nails so it's obvious that the force is going to be divided between these two nails we can also find out the value and it's going to be this much but we still need to find out things because uh, we are asked about the maximum shearing stress the maximum shearing stress is a little bit different Let's clean this part. If we want to find out how much the maximum stress is, we need to consider something. This is a cross section, and this was the portion we used in the Q equation. But now we are going to find out the shear stress for the entire beam and find out where it is maximum. If we want to know where the shear stress is maximum, we need to consider Q. I is always constant and is not going to change. But this one will change. Why? Because it depends on the portion we have chosen. But where will this factor be the maximum value? Since the Q is the first moment of area about the neutral axis, which here is this place, we know that if the portion is exactly the half of the cross-sectional area, it is going to have its maximum value because the area is going to be more than what it was before. To find out the maximum first moment of area, we can use the Q we have obtained before by denoted with Q1 and add two extra portions to it and each distance will be equal to and cross the area if we show this with prime the Q prime is going to be this amount now we can find out the maximum shear stress V is constant I is constant the thickness of the beam is constant but the Q has changed and if we plug the values the maximum shear stress is going to be equal to this. Here's another example to understand the concept of shear stress more deeply. In this example, there is a built-up wooden beam as shown and uh, the nails are spaced 
as you can see here we are given the spacing between the nails and we are about to determine the shear force in the nail again going to be this and we're going to find it in A and in B because the spacing in A and B is a little different. Okay, let's start with the solution. Uh, again, we need to calculate the shear flow. And to calculate this one, we need to find out the Q and the I. The I is actually given in the question and we can use this. So we only need to find out the first moment of area. If we first calculate the force in A, we will see that in this case, this part is connected to the rest of the beam by this nail. So if the nail here is removed, then this part will be disconnected. So we need to find out the shear flow here and the force that is applied to the nail. We are given the spacing which is actually this much for A and we are going to find out first moment of area for finding out the first moment of area as I mentioned we need to consider this part if this is the center line the distance to the center line is going to be this much which here is equal to this amount in millimeter. And now we can find out how much this is. We have the area of the section, truly the portion, the shaded portion, and we have the distance. So this is going to be equal to, this is the area, and this is the distance which is this much and it's going to be equal to this amount so now we can find out how much the shear flow in this part is and we can find out the force which is obtained by this equation only one nail is exerted to the portion so only one nail is going to be considered in our calculation the spacing is given we can find out the shear flow using this equation we have the shear force we have the first moment of area and the moment of inertia plus the spacing and the result is going to be this much for the next case, we need to find out how much force is applied to the nail inserted here. So, for this means, we know that, again, the first section is going to be this. And the rest of the beam. My drawing is not that much good. I do apologize. This was the portion of A, but now we need to know which part we have to use for calculating the first moment of area of the portion B. So since there is a nail located like this, if we remove this nail, this part is actually, this part is going to be removed. So the first moment of area of this part needs to be considered. We can write it like this. We have the moment of, actually the first moment of area for this part. And we can use it again. Plus another Q, which is actually be the portion here. And we can find out plus area this is the area of the portion and this is the distance to the center line so so and it is this much this is going to be the result and again we can find out if 
force applied to the nail using this equation the V is constant we use this first moment of area the I is constant and the spacing of B which is given in the question so if the values are what this is going to be the force applied to the nail in the B portion Thank you for watching us. If you like this video, you can subscribe. If you have any question about the solution, you can ask us in the comments.